sea urchins attach to surfaces using these fleshy tube-like extensions called tube feet. Um, and they end in a disc that secretes an adhesive. And what's really cool about this adhesive is that it's, it secretes a glue, almost like super glue, something that's fundamentally permanent, um, but they use it for temporary attachments. So then when they wanna move, they secrete an enzyme that breaks the bond of this glue and the tube foot that allows the tube foot to come off the surface. And they can do this over and over again. So they leave these little adhesive footprints behind. Um, and so in this study, we were focused on, on a, a adhesive properties of tube feet um, because adhesion is critical for sea urchins in their daily lives. They're living in very wave-swept, high-energy habitats, um, and they need to be able to resist those hydrodynamic forces. And so we looked at not only how tube feet attach to surfaces in low salinity, but also how uh, the coordinated activities of tube feet, like movement and being able to flip themselves if they get thrown off a rock and have to flip themselves over, um, how those were affected by low salinity. Sea urchins are herbivores, um, the majority of them are at least, and in a lot of marine ecosystems they're very important herbivores. So in kelp forests and in coral reefs they play a very big role in managing um, algal populations. And what can happen is if there's too much urchin grazing, either sea urchins are overpopulated or sea urchins are kind of out and about of their crevices, which can be caused by a variety of different changes in the environment, um, they will graze algae either too much or too little. So when we start at a normal salinity level um, and you drop down to something just slightly low salinity, the first thing to go is sea urchin writing response. They are start to be unable to write themselves if they get flipped over. If you go down a little bit more, then sea urchins struggle to move, and so they can't move along a planar surface. But then the last thing to go in very low salinity is their adhesive ability. Their individual tube feet can't move, and they can't robustly attach. So there's this uh, differential response of tube foot activities that seem to be related to how coordinated those activities are. What's interesting about sea urchins is that they're secreting a permanent adhesive, but they're actually dissolving it and using it for temporary attachment, which means that we can now potentially harness the power of that if we can learn the fundamental principles, perhaps the molecular uh, mechanisms that that accomplish that, we might be able to extract those fundamental design principles and apply that to human design challenges and, and our adhesives today. So imagine being able to have an adhesive that is otherwise permanent, but then you put a little enzyme and it breaks it down and then you can go and stick it again somewhere else. Um, and so as a, as a member of the Bioinspired Institute, um, I'm able to make connections between with faculty all over campus in various disciplines, you know, from biology, chemistry, physics, engineering, uh, and try to, to work collaboratively. So some of the research that I'm doing here at Syracuse um, with Austin um, and within the Bioinspired Institute is going to involve looking at um, kind of design principles of these tube feet and what does that mean for you know, human design principles. And that's one of the things that really drew me to Syracuse um, because as I was getting ready and thinking about graduate school, I was like, I like being able to ask both of these questions and the Bio-Inspired Institute is a great place to ask these questions. Mm -hmm.